Hello and welcome to the Skyline View podcast. I'm John Harrison. Of all professions affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, the performing arts have arguably been hit hardest. In this episode, we'll find out how the cast and crew of this year's Spring Musical overcame the challenges presented by distance learning to go on with the show. Today I'm having a chat with Gary Ferguson, the director and choreographer of the Skyline College Spring Musical. Their production this year is the Tony award-winning musical satire, You're in Town, which I hope Gary can give us some background on. I absolutely can. Hi, John. Thank you for having me today. Of course. Thank you for coming on the show. You're in Town, what a, a, you know, a tongue-in-cheek musical when you can really make people talk about art being high class or low class. Well, hopefully we've taken a very low class idea and elevated it just a little bit. It's kind of a musical, if you don't know anything about You're in Town, it's a musical about a company that basically has carte blanche on regulating, utilizing the toilet. Can you imagine if you had to pay every time you had to use the toilet. And this big ma and pa company, of course, tells all the people, you know, it's for your own good. If we don't do this, X, Y, and Z will happen. So basically it's about keeping social norms. Well, we thought after given the last 18 months and what we were all looking at, we decided we would put a very current spin on it. So we have literally set our urine town over the last four years, looking at the outgoing administration. Okay, can you talk a little bit more about setting the show in the past four years? I I think we were all stuck at home, right? We were really stuck at home for the last 18 months of looking at where our world had gone. And so I thought, well, what better outlet for people who have been experiencing literally, if you will, like, civics history in action, right? You know, most of the time when you're reading about major points of history, especially for my time period, it's it's a lot of reading. A lot of things hadn't happened until the last 20, 25 years. So it was very interesting being a part of that history and being able to kind of give your response to it in real time. So all the students have been very, very happy because they get to kind of portray what they saw happening. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you for that little bit of background. Speaking of background, can I ask you a little bit about your background and how you came to teach at Skyline and how you came to be the director of the musical? Uh, what what are some of the things that you've done and 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 who who are you, Gary Ferguson? Well, in a previous lifetime, uh, dance on Broadway in and out of New York for fifteen years, dance captain for the Radio City Rockettes, Vegas shows, international shows. That was, you know, just a working, working actor, very happy to do it, cruise ships, you you name it. I kind of did it all. Then, of course, you start to look at, you know, how your life is going to change. And I didn't know if I wanted to keep really performing as hard as I was performing. So, you know, it was time to kind of look and reevaluate my life. And I decided to come back home because I was born and raised in the Bay Area. And coming back home, it kind of just allowed me to, to sit back to think and say, what do I want the next period of time to look like? And so I started teaching, you know, it was something I never thought I was going to do, right? I was a performer. And as performers, in my mind at that time, we didn't teach, we just got backup degrees just in case. Well, I actually started to develop a a really, really big passion for teaching. So I taught at an all-girls Catholic school in Burlingame, Mercy High School. We started with absolutely no program whatsoever. And when I left Mercy, we were five-time national championship ranked in dance, hip-hop, palm, you named it. One-fourth of the school population was taking dance at, at any given time. And so I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish at Mercy. And an opportunity came up at Skyline to help that next generation. And so when it was brought to me last year to do Chicago, which we ended up not being able to do, it seemed just to be a, you know, a natural fit to come back and put a show on for Skyline in virtual reality. Thank you. So speaking of the process that you're going through now with going over Zoom, your title as choreographer of the show begs the question, how do you choreograph a musical through Zoom? I have finally figured out how to get the information to (laughs) the students the way you want. So as a choreographer, it's kind of a three-tier 
idea, right? I have to think about it at the very, very beginning. And I, and I think that's why you allude to this question, right? How do we see the full body? How do we get all of that going? So what we're, what we're trying to say in our particular production is we didn't make a Zoom sickle, if you want to call it. We are making a movie. So a lot of the video that you'll see in our production are edits, right? So I was able to shoot full body shots of various different dancers at various different times. And then we just edit them together just like you would edit music. But the teaching was was quite tricky. You know, when you're normally teaching a student to dance, you're in a very big, bright lit room, right, with a mirror. And you figure out very quickly what type of learner you are. You're either the reflection, the mirror learner, which kind of reverses everything, right? Because it's, it's a reflection of you. So it's it, your brain is working in opposition. So it's reversing. Or you're a person that looks at the teacher in the space. So you're moving the exact same way. So you're actually a mimic learner. So it was very difficult to know what that teaching style was. So what I did was I would log into the rehearsal Zoom meetings with multiple cameras. So I would log in and have my computer in front of me, for instance. So it would show the students my body from the front. But then I would have my iPad set up behind me recording in the same meeting. So the students who needed to see me from the back in reverse could also partake. And then of course, there's a lot of talking. So what we've really learned is all those years trying to figure out accommodations really, really helped in teaching choreography. I've got to say the idea of having two cameras, two angles for your dance class is brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. I wanted to ask, at what part of the process uh, are you? I, I see that you're streaming on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Can you just talk about what point you're at in the production? Yes, we have one more full day of shooting. So once again, I want to reiterate, we're, we're kind of making a movie. So we shot the musical out of order, just like you would do a movie. We shot the most difficult scenes first, the things that we have to edit first. So we're, we are literally have about another hour and a half to two hours of shooting to do. We've got to probably do a few little additions, some little add-ons. So we have a whole day to shoot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically have that first pre-screening. And that will hopefully happen by Thursday. And then by the weekend, we should have a copy of it to just sit and take notes and take notes and take notes to figure out how we can do the last little edits or if we have to do any last minute reshootings before we have our live performance. I think it's amazing that you're also going to have this, this tangible thing when you're done. It's not just going to be a sort of transient single performance that is streamed live. It's going to be a, a thing you, you can have for the rest of your life if you want. Do, do students seem to appreciate that value or... Well, absolutely. And to even go back, you know, we're, we're a junior college. The goal is we want to provide a space for our, our music majors to go on. So we definitely want them to have something to take with them. So we will not only be pressing this recording for them, but we'll be pressing a CD as well. So we're hopefully going to be able to say when students are requested to have your own recordings of yourself doing a ballad or an up-tempo to get into other programs, they'll have the video and the press recordings in hand. Is there anything else you want to say about You're in Town, the process, the Spring Musical, Skyland College? Well, I say really, really come and see it. It is not a Zoom sickle, right? I know mm -hmm. that, you know, we have been inundated with Zoom. You can see all the problems with Zoom. Our job was to literally take this medium that everybody has started to hate and to actually make it really, really fun and to create things that you probably didn't think you'd be able to see utilizing the medium. So I tell all the students, come see what you actually can do if you kind of put your biases down and really work with the program. Thanks again to Gary Ferguson for taking a moment to speak about the spring musical You're in Town, which will be premiering on Friday, April 23rd at 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. To buy tickets, visit Show Ticks for You. That's S H O W T I X, the number four and the letter U.com, and search for Skyline College. Or visit skylinecollege.edu slash spring musical for upcoming information. I also encourage you to visit the skylineview.com to stay up to date on Skyline College news or to follow us on one or all of our social media accounts. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time. <laughs>